Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, we have limited time because at 1.15 the seminar will start. But the purpose of today's press conference is really for the Santa Marta group to explain its work in the struggle against trafficking. The Santa Marta group is an international alliance of religious leaders and police chiefs working together with religious sisters and civil society to eliminate human trafficking and modern day slavery. It's named after, for those who are curious, the residence of Pope Francis. And he was very much encouraging and leading at the formation of Santa Marta group four years ago. If we were to encapsulate it, we'd say the work of the Santa Marta group is to foster a symbiotic relationship between law enforcement and the resources of the Catholic Church in the fight against human trafficking. So today we have we will say a few words at the start. The permanent observer of the Holy See to the United Nations, Archbishop Bowser. On his left is Cardinal Nichols, the president and chair of the Santa Marta Group. And next to Cardinal Nichols is Hilary Chester, the director of the anti-trafficking efforts of the US Bishops' Conference. On Archbishop Bowser's right is Kevin Highland, a senior advisor to the Santa Marta Group, and also the first independent anti-slavery commissioner of the UK. And next to Kevin is Commissioner Nestor Oncalia, who is the Argentinian police chief. He's also been heavily involved with the Santa Marta group. Thank you very much, and over to Archbishop Alza. Thank you very much, Alex. I would just like, first of all, to welcome uh, the members uh, of all the authorities uh, of the Santa Marta group to the United Nations we have just come out from uh, a meeting with uh, the president of the General Assembly, who was uh, not only curious about this, uh, always like they said, Hollywood alliance <laughs> between the bishops and the chiefs of police, the police officers and the human resources of the Catholic Church, especially women religious who are really in the forefront of the fight against human trafficking and specifically in the care and rehabilitation of the victims. This afternoon, we are organizing a conference uh, during which uh, we will present the work of Santa Marta to the participants. So I uh, just would like to say uh, welcome to, to, to His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Nichols, to Commissioner Kevin Highland, Commissioner Oncalia, and uh, to the uh, representative of the Conference of Bishops here in the United States, and I will pass the microphone to them. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, it's two years since I sat at this desk uh, giving a similar press conference uh, after uh, a day's uh, meeting here in the UN of many, many people involved in the struggle against human trafficking. It was a very fascinating day. And one of the things that I learned was that in the broad spectrum of many people who contribute to this struggle, Santa Marta had a very specific and unique character and role. And it is, as you've heard, to bring together the resources and spread and presence on the ground of the Catholic Church and all that it represents and the forces of law and order. And I, two years later, I'm able to say that that is a growing cooperation. It's growing in its breadth, in its membership and in its efficiency. And so we've been able to report this morning on some of the progress made the increasing membership of the Santa Marta Group and its plans to take root in a number of regions of the world so that it is not simply uh, a meeting every 18 months in which we can give each other information and encouragement, but it also begins to develop regional strength uh, through centers in different parts of the world. Uh, we've heard this morning uh, how the partnership between priests, between the church and the forces of law and order is not perhaps the most obvious one in the world. Uh, 
and we've also learned over these last two years of the importance of trust, human trust, trust in each other. Uh, again, which was not a given, which has had to be built and made, but it is such an important dynamic in this cooperation. Uh, and in order to generate trust, what is also important is honesty. And what we found at the last meeting of the Santa Marta group was that we had got to the point of being able to talk not only about successful activities, but also failures. And that, I think, then moves a cooperation beyond um, a cooperation in which people want to tell their good news, in which they want to confirm, as it were, their standing uh, to a point in which there is genuine trust and trusting each other with our failings as well. If I could give an example, the Cardinal Archbishop Bo from Myanmar said that really in his part of the world, the problem of human trafficking was getting worse. And when he said, I'm sorry to bring you bad news, but Archbishop Aousa said, we'd much rather hear bad news that is true than good, which is false news. And that's the point we're at. We want to deal with what is true. It's hard, it's demanding, it can break your heart at times to hear the stories of trafficked victims, but that's the reality on which we're working together. Thank you. So when we look at the issue of human trafficking and modern slavery, the figures are quite shocking, that it's estimated globally that 40 million lives are currently kept in conditions of modern slavery, that's domestic servitude, forced labour, sexual exploitation, forced criminality, or for their organs. And shockingly, 16 million of those people are in our private economy. So by working collaboratively, we can actually make a difference. When we look at those numbers, it may be very difficult but actually it is partnerships like the Santa Marta Group that has been able to get to the core of those numbers. And I will tell you examples, for example, in Nigeria, where this was one of the main countries of origin to Europe, particularly through the roots of North Africa, where people are losing their lives, people are being exploited, people are being kept in shocking conditions before they can get enough money to travel across the dangerous routes into Europe. And then when they arrive in Europe, they can end up in a range of forms of exploitation. But it was through the Santa Marta Group that I was able to go to the heart of the problem in Edo State, somewhere where figures that come from the UN showed that it was one of the main sources of those vulnerable people from within Nigeria. And from that has grown a really strong relationship where there is delivery to the communities making them aware of what's happening on the ground, making them understand the risks, but giving them reasons to stay, and actually working with the law enforcement agencies there. So there is rule of law, and then working with the local governments, as challenging as it may be, in order to get their engagement, but also with tribal leaders and those with local influence. But what we need to do at the global level is we need to make sure that we work with communities on the ground, for example, Santa Marta Group, and from my own background, when I was head of the Metropolitan Police London Human Trafficking Unit, that's where I understood the power and the ability of the church. Religious sisters coming out on operations whereby they could give the support to the victims and survivors, whilst police they did their job of prosecuting and pursuing the criminals. But we also need to look at the opportunities for development on the international stage. How do we give development to countries where they have no opportunities? We need to work at the global stage, which is what the Santa Marta Group is starting to do, to inform what kind of development can actually take away the power of the traffickers and actually give communities the ability to thrive, whether that's in Latin America, whether that is in uh, West Africa, whether that is in Southeast Asia, or whether that is in London. And then we need to make sure that the laws are efficient and effective and dealt with compassionately. 
And I think my friend from Argentina will speak more of that. So 40 million are suffering, and we need to make sure that businesses are accountable. As I say, 16 million are in that. In the UK, we have transparency in supply chain legislation, whereby businesses have to account for what they are doing if they trade over 36 million to make sure that their companies are not trading in modern slavery or human trafficking. But the response to that has been patchy. But we are seeing other countries join that, such as Australia, such as Canada considering new legislation, Sweden and France. But we also see countries like Nigeria and Uganda exploring their legislation. But we need to make sure that no business in the world actually thrives on human trafficking or modern slavery. For example, the mobile phones we have in our pockets will be powered by coltan, which may have been mined in the Congo by children as young as four. No business should have that in its supply chain. And it is actually organisations like the Santa Marta Group that can reach out and identify where that's happening, but also help with solutions. So I think the, the world has moved on in the last two years. We now have sustainable development goals and opportunities to address this, but we are at the start of a very difficult road. And I think it will take a lot of efforts, a lot of uh, collaboration, a lot of partnership, but as the Cardinal says, trust. And once we have all that, then I think we can start to see that we are making this a crime of the past and putting it into the history books where it should have been placed a very long time ago. He doesn't speak in English, but va a traducir. Hola. Um, yo creo que que ya I believe eh, that. los los compañeros de, de este equipo de este gran grupo que es Santa Marta ya expusieron the sobre of this group, of this grand group, Santa Marta group. sobre la génesis de creación en el año 2014 de este grupo based on the genesis of the birth of this group in que 1994 tiene, que tiene como objetivo el com combatir la trata de personas tanto sexual como laboral en el mundo which has as an objective to address trafficking of human persons and, and things como policía y como jefe de policía federal en mi país en Argentina as a police officer and chief of police in my country of Argentina celebro esta oportunidad de participar en este grupo I celebrate this opportunity to share with the Santa Marta group celebro esta oportunidad de tomar conciencia I also celebrate this time to take esta, into conscience de, de este flagelo actual de este de este momento of what is happening currently in this world que es la esclavitud moderna. Yo pensé that que la esclavitud my, había desaparecido. Pero escuchando a las víctimas en las reuniones que hemos tenido en Santa Marta, en Londres, en España, and, and listening to the victims that we have engaged with in London and que como funcionario policial tomemos conciencia de la dimensión de la gravedad de have, este delito. Have allowed us to take into consideration the gravity of the issue and, and the dimensions by which um, these victims are, are affected. Y, y bueno, eh, la idea de esta alianza estratégica entre la Iglesia the idea of this strategic alliance between y las fuerzas de seguridad o los jefes de policía o los encargados and de aplicar la ley and those who are, are entrusted with um, the rule of law. Yo creo que es primordial para, para combatir este, este flagelo moderno. Form of modern slavery. Así que eh, desde mi óptica es, es, es importante, important es importante tomar conciencia, sensibilizarnos de la dimensión to, to de los daños de este delito. Of the devastation of these crimes. Eh, solo, solo entendiendo, Only conociendo la enfermedad and understanding the haciendo un buen diagnóstico vamos a tener una buena medicina it's an analogy uh, to health and by understanding the conditions the, the gravity of the conditions can we be able to address the diagnostic right the diagnosis excuse me así que eh, la idea la idea que tenemos acá este dirigidos por el cardenal Nichols and so the idea that we have by cardinal Nichols es este entre todos unidos between all of us juntos, united together la idea es de elaborar estrategia para que the este idea is strategically que no reconoce fronteras de países uh, that ¿sí? does not address or consider igual the boundaries que el tráfico of, de drogas of territory ¿sí? es internacional no 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 hay límites es globalizado 
there are no limits, there are no, no global limits to, to be able to um, have this group address the issue together. Y en consecuencia tenemos que trabajar organizadamente todo el mundo. And in that we, we need to work together for the rest of the world. Así que bueno, eh, la idea es trabajar juntos y, the idea y, de, is to work y desalentar together. esta idea de someter al hombre por el hombre. Gracias. And and to really bring bring about awareness of, of the sacrifice of trafficking right a man or a woman in that case thank you hello good afternoon i'm here on behalf of the us conference of catholic bishops and our anti trafficking programs here in the us uh, my intent really is to share some of the partnerships that we have with our federal law enforcement partners at the national level, um, such as Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Homeland Security Investigations, all the way down, though, to the parish level, where there are relationships being built between the faith community at the parish level with communities who are very much at risk and are experiencing trafficking, communities that may not have the strongest or most trusting relationships with law enforcement. And what we see is our faith partners, um, especially women religious and the Catholic charities, are able to build those bridging relationships and help uh, build trust between the communities most impacted by trafficking and law enforcement who really are there um, to bring about investigations, interdictions, and ideally um, help put traffickers out of business. That's good. Thank you very much. And now open to any of your questions. If you could identify which outlet you're working for and who you are. Over to you. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Matthew Lee, um, Inner City Press. Thanks a lot for the briefing. I wanted to ask you about a, a particular um, instance, which is the, 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 the plight of the Rohingya in, in Myanmar and now Bangladesh. It seems like if you just do a news search, you'll see that, that basically the idea is that people are targeting these refugee camps and trying to traffic people to other countries. And in some cases, those being trafficked are actually the ones who get arrested. I'm wondering if that's something that the group has worked on. Have you worked with either Myanmar or Bangladesh? And also, what's your guidance in terms of, like, who should bear, bear the, the criminal penalty if, if a person is being trafficked? Is there some kind of best practice on that? Thanks a lot. Yes, we had um, reports from those areas at our last Santa Marta meeting. And um, it was one example, but a particularly public example at the moment, of how, while there is a distinction between refugees, migrants, and people who have paid to be smuggled uh, on the one hand and trafficked people on the other, uh, what the situations such as that in the world today show is that there is an almost limitless supply of victims to be exploited by human traffickers. And, and that's a, a, an awareness that I think that should be part of uh, society's response to the movement of people around the world to the problem of immigration. Uh, it's not the only aspect to it, but it is an important aspect. On the more technical parts of your question, I'd like to pass to Kevin, please. So I think, as the Cardinal says, the 65 million displaced people around the world are a source of people to be trafficked. And I've met people who have initially been moving uh, into North Africa because they have been displaced through conflict or oppression, and then they've ended up being exploited as trafficked people. So there is a nexus between them. But on the point you raise around the issue of people who are trafficked, who commit crimes whilst they're being trafficked as a result of trafficking, then in the United Kingdom, our legislation creates a statutory defence. It is one of the recommendations that comes out of the guidance and the UN Palermo Protocols and the EU and the Council of Europe directives. So we need to have that globally. And that is something when you're talking about Bangladesh, for example, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and the Commonwealth Summit recently, I discussed issues of human trafficking, and one of the recommendations that's just come out of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association is a guidance, and including that is the issue that legislation for these countries should include a statutory defence. So those who are actually victims of modern slavery and do acts, for example, document offences or other issues, should have a statutory defence and should never be prosecuted. I could just add to that that earlier I spoke about trust 
and trust between the agents of the church, if I can use that phrase, and the police. In London, that trust, its first step was to have a clear undertaking from the Metropolitan Police through Kevin in his previous job, uh, was that victims would be treated as victims and not as criminals. Uh, and it's only when that principle is established then you get to the point which we've arrived at in some cases in London where victims welcomed, helped, healed to some extent can then testify against their traffickers. And in the last six months or so, three people, three women who have been rescued from trafficking in London testified resulting in 47 years imprisonment as sentences against their traffickers. Thank you, Carla Stay Global Research. I have several questions which may well be related, although they appear, may appear different. Uh, the commission from Argentina mentioned that your organization was uh, set up in 1984, is, is that correct? I wanted to ask at what point did the, I hope it's realistic to say resurgence of slavery, become a global scourge because it evidently has become that. And in 1988, when I was in Thailand, I was told by an American officer that young women were lured from uh, northern Asian countries. They were preferable for the businessmen uh, because of the lighter skin. They were lured into Bangkok. Uh, their Passports were confiscated, and they were then forced into becoming prostitutes. Uh, these are very young girls. And our, the, the young man who was with the U.S. officer said, well, you know, during the communist period, this would never have been tolerated. But now it's a big issue, and you might have a story. I wasn't looking for a story at that time. Um, also, the film The Whistleblower was shown here, which showed young women in Eastern Europe who are now trafficked uh, in their passports, again, are confiscated, and they are trapped into sexual slavery. There is something which may be related and may be related to, may be the result of the gross inequality in income uh, globally. I was speaking, in fact, last night with an ambassador from a developing country regarding the fact that very often when I was traveling there, I would see young boys, sometimes girls, five or six years old, bent over, carrying heavy, heavy, heavy sticks on their back. These were children who should have been in school. And they were doing this to provide some income for their family. Now. I do not think that parents would deliberately enslave their children, but this is, one would have to say, it's a gray area, there's a spectrum. Are these children considered slaves, and what can be done to relieve the horrific poverty of the families that have to, perhaps have to, uh, consign their children to these horrible, you know, back-breaking tasks? when they should be in school or playing. Thank you very much for those comments. Um, clearly, the, the roots of enforced labor and modern slavery are very deep. And uh, your first example of young women caught into prostitution is as old as human nature. Um, what I think we see today, though, is that this is a major industry. This is, um, Kevin will give you some figures, uh, that this is so profitable that it has become an international, well-organized network. And uh, alongside of that, there is, as you have pointed out, the challenge of poverty. So it is true that in some of the work of Santa Marta, in particular places so far, uh, we tried to address the actual on-the-ground poverty. And again, Kevin can illustrate that. But the, um, the, the, the broad picture that you've helpfully painted shows how complex this issue is. Thank you. Thank you. And I think 
you know, your original question, why has this become such a major issue? Why is it here now? Well, it makes criminals 150 billion US dollars a year. So there's your answer. It's good money. And when you think, you know, that in comparison to other business is a good return on your investment, which may be purchasing a few budget airline tickets or moving some people from one place to another or just holding them against their will. So that's what we need to do is look at it for what it is. It is a serious organised crime where there is a human life in suffering, where people are exploited. Once we start to understand it as that and that it's not some kind of audit issue or some inconvenience that happens in parts of the world, then we know this is a serious issue. But as you quietly quite rightly say, it's also about development. And that's one thing that I pushed for with the UN is this is about development because it's about health, because people who are trafficked are more likely to contract HIV and other diseases. It's about equality because where there's poverty and where people don't have rights, it's more likely to happen. And it's gender because we know that those who are trafficked, it's 72% are women or girls, and also of those that are trafficked for sexual exploitation, it goes up to the mid-90s. So it's a gender issue. So we need to use the Sustainable Development Goals across the different goals to address this, because we need to take away the power of the traffickers, because people are leaving parts of the world because there's no opportunity. And we need to give them opportunity where they are, make their community safe, give them chances to work. But one of the things, particularly in Nigeria, that we've been working with, and very much with the church and the religious sisters, is giving women an opportunity because the opportunities for them there are very limited. How can we get them in the management roles? How can we get them in roles where there's responsibility and respect and dignity? Because I'm a firm believer, if you educate girls and the women, you educate the family and the communities and you make stabilised communities. So I think we need to look at this at a much more... Uh, higher level across the UN but across governments and you know we see that it is the religious women around the world who are delivering so much response to this they know what it looks like on the ground so we need to work with them understand the challenges and then respond to them which is very much what the Santa Marta group is designed to do thank you for that um, we have a few minutes left so if we could keep the questions very brief John Messler, WorldTribune.com. Uh, looking at the vista of the world, which particular area or epicenter would you say is the source of most of the tra trafficking? Would it be Southeast Asia or Latin America or Eastern Europe? Thank you. So if we look at uh, figures that are available, perhaps from the uh, Walk Free Global Index, we'd be talking about Asia being the main source of trafficking. Uh, and that's split into different parts of Asia. But um, figures are really hard to calculate. But the 40 million, a very large percentage, will come from Asia. But if we look at, when we look at areas that are really condensed, if we looked at West Africa, for example, Nigeria would be very high because it represents about 18% of people who arrive in southern Italy, for example, which obviously is a high number. And then we know that about 80% of the women that arrive there end up being trafficked or exploited, either en route or on arrival. So there's Asia and then West Africa. To add to that, please, this point. At our last Santa Marta conference, there were representatives from 34 different nations, and there was one principle that became very clear. There is no nation, no nation, that isn't both a nation of origin, from which people are trafficked, and a nation of destination to which people are trafficked. So none of us are out of this. We might think of this as a third world problem or of a distant problem. I became involved most personally listening to an English girl who was trafficked into prostitution in Italy. This is everywhere and none of us are outside of the loop. Sorry, if I could just add one point there to support the Cardinal as well. Last year, we identified 5,200 people who were referred into our national referral mechanism in the UK. Because we're opening our eyes, the largest percentage was British nationals, and the largest percentage of the British nationals were children. So it's happening in our own backyard. Because we are looking 
and understanding we're finding. Thank you. And unfortunately, this will have to be the last question. But over to you. Thank you. Sarah New Somerset. I freelance for the Chief Leader, which is our local law enforcement newspaper, and I also write for the New York Metro. My question is, um, first of all, I want to support the Cardinal very briefly about your comments that it is happening everywhere, especially in the United States. Women are notoriously trafficked in for sporting events like the Super Bowl. It's, it's in New York. It's everywhere. Um, this is not a third world issue, sorry, developing world issue. Also, um, I wanted to just ask, um, will you elaborate on which particular regions you are currently focusing on besides Asia and Nigeria? And also, have you reached out to local law enforcement or do you work with like higher levels of law enforcement like um, Interpol or the FBI strictly? Okay, before we go on to the general point, possibly Hillary. Sure, I can respond to how things are working here in the U.S. as far as how our church and church partners are working with law enforcement. We work at the national level, so we coordinate with headquarters of the FBI or Homeland Security um, on things like training, perhaps, and good protocols. But we also do get to the very granular level, the very individual level, where we do have task forces across the U.S. that are organized at the local level, and there are very often representatives from federal and local law enforcement who are members of those task forces, and then also social service providers, faith-based organizations, so that they do work very collaboratively um, across cities in the U.S. and. They do certainly mobilize, and we do often talk about sporting events and other um, sort of polls for that kind of adult entertainment where sexual exploitation in particular takes place. Thank you. The, the, the question was also just about the certain regions that the Santa Marta group will be focusing on yeah. at the moment. So in the United Kingdom, you know, there are local partnerships which are at parish level between, you know, police and local parishes. But you talk about sporting events. Uh, in the 2012 Olympics in the United Kingdom, um, it was uh, religious sisters, our health service, our law enforcement, and uh, volunteers from the churches came together and opened up a centre. So that it meant that during that period, women who were at risk of being exploited in prostitution had somewhere to go for sanctity and safety, uh, which was very successful during the period of the Olympics and Paralympics, it was taking a different approach, not just a law enforcement approach, which wouldn't have been uh, the right way to address it, but it was about looking at the welfare of the individuals. Um, I agree with the idea of Cardinal Nichols. I agree with the idea of Cardinal uh, Nichols. The thoughts. De, manera, regionalizar that to a certain extent, regionalizing. Un representante cada continente. A representative of, of every continent, va a perhaps. La situación particular, porque ustedes saben que cada I would understand the issue, tiene su, su issue particularidades. of the Entonces, yo creo que esto que se gestó en Londres, la iniciativa this that was Vaticano, born in Vaticano, la iniciativa del Papa Francisco, y se, se comenzó en el 2014, and this group that was formed by bueno Pope Francis in, in en estos tiempos que se replique pequeño Santa Marta en, en distintos continentes. Por ejemplo, hablábamos... En, en, en América, en África, que también yep. ustedes saben que es... Where a group el, in, in the United States, States or in Africa would... Día. Yo creo que eso es una iniciativa interesante de, de estar en todo el mundo, porque es un delito, como dije antes, world, es un delito global, no es, lo, no es un delito crime, local y particular de un solo país o un solo continente, es global. To one, one country, it is global. Quería responderle a la señora que hizo la pregunta antes. I would like to respond to the woman who asked the question before regarding. Porque se empezó, se comenzó a, eh, como como que el mundo se empezó a ocupar de la trata en estos últimos tiempos. Of why the world began to make um, or become aware of the issue, the severity of the issue, the gravity of the issue. Usted sabe que la trata existe desde que la sociedad, que el hombre vive en sociedad. Siempre ha existido sobre todo la trata sexual. Since, since um, man has existed. Um, pero siempre en cierta manera como que se la subestimó. Bueno, es un delito menor. But we always used to brush it off as it was a minor crime or not as in, not as Se lo veía como bueno, es parte de la sociedad. Y y qué pasó con el tiempo se ha tomado conciencia de time, la gravedad we've, we've de We've grown los daños. conscience of the gravity. Que en realidad como dijimos antes, es una esclavitud. That it is slavery. Se form of slavery. Se cumplió como yo digo lo que lo que predijo el Leviatán Hof, que el hombre es el lobo del hombre, lamentablemente. Um, it is uh, an expression. Uh, el hombre es el lobo. El hombre es el lobo del hombre. Um, 
translated. It, yes, uh, translated, it's an expression that reads, um, a man is a wolf to another man. As if to it. Eh, y el problema se empezó a visualizar, y eso fue la importancia, and sobre todo en los problem. últimos 20 años. Y si no, esto es esclavitud, and es una esclavitud moderna. That in the past 20 years it has really become a full-blown form of modern slavery. El actual, el, nuestro Papa Francisco, ustedes saben que fue el, el cardenal en Buenos Aires. Pope Francis, as you know, was cardinal in Buenos Aires. Y él ya se ocupaba y hablaba, hablaba there, de la esclavitud moderna. He would um, speak to the issue of modern en slavery. En Buenos Aires, él iba a visitar a los barrios carenciados y he, trataba de recuperar a las chicas y a los chicos. He would also visit the villages, the impoverished villages of Buenos Aires and Yo help the, the idea, local women. That idea, cuando es elegido Papa, when he's creo, elected Pope desde Francis, mi opinión, este, trasladó esa idea en el grupo Santa Marta. In the creation of, of forming the ¿No? Santa Marta group. Y la idea es visual, que, que se visualice el daño, que se visualice el delito so para poderlo combatir. The crime, the, the, um, the no esconder combat. la basura debajo de la alfombra. Y al señor que hizo la otra pregunta sobre, sobre los like actores, the, the question, lamentablemente, we, muchas veces las personas que fueron víctimas de trata Many times victims of being, of trafficking, si no son recuperados if not or se transforman en actores de la trata el día de mañana they transform into actors ¿Sí? in, in trafficking. de víctimas se, se, se transforman en, From victim en, to actors en, en, en traficantes de personas in trafficking. o trata de personas gracias Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Unfortunately, we'll have to draw it to a close because everybody will have to run off to the seminar, which you will be able to follow and hopefully report further on this very important issue. Thank you to the panel, and bye-bye. <laughs>